Um, knowledge of the uh, slave trade is important because, first of all, all history is important. But um, this particular history, it's my, it's the, the history of, of me, but also it's the history of the world community. Um, the history of slavery and the slave trade is, um, it's not just uh, revealing uh, the history of my ancestors and what they've come through. It also sheds light on what's emanated throughout the, our time on this planet. Um, it's about what the world community has come through. It's about what the world community has evolved from and you know how they came out on the other side. Um, I think the history of slavery shows us how out of some of the most difficult and dark periods of uh, human history, um, these periods have also produced beauty and resilience and strength uh, from people who were oppressed at that time. You know, these people found ways to survive and even thrive in situations that were really horrible. So uh, the history of slavery shows us, you know, what people have succumbed to, but also what they've aspired to, right? It shows us what they've, what they've, uh, you know, what they've soared towards, what they can soar towards. And I think that's uh, really the most important thing, the inspirational story. The, uh, not just the darker part of the history of slavery, but the, the uh, inspirational part, the uh, universally uh, acknowledged truth that people can overcome really difficult situations. Uh, history of slavery shows us the, the sinister part of human beings, but it also shows us the courageous part of human beings because there were people who really didn't have any power who somehow found a way to stand up to injustice, right, and overcome. And I think that's the crucial thing, you know. Um, we need to study slavery so we know where we came from as a world community and where we're going. And we want to hope that, uh, you know, we don't repeat the, the mistakes of the past. Uh, we want to pave uh, a foundation, a strong foundation for world culture that respects human value and human, human rights and human dignity. So the story of slavery basically allows us to look at ourselves as human beings and see who we are and what we can be. So how have you shown your commitment to the duty of remembrance? Um, you know, I'm a musician, so what I use is my music, primarily. You know, um, I became involved with UNESCO and the slave projects because uh, about four years ago I visited the island of Agoré off the coast of Senegal, and they have a museum there that commemorates slavery, and they show you um, the way slaves, the uh, captive Africans, were treated and how they were held, held captive there uh, in these holding tanks, essentially, before they were put on the boat and sent into slavery. And I knew about this. I've heard stories about this all my life. But to stand there in a place and you can get a, a really real sense of what it felt like, and, and it hit me that um, this story has to be told in a way that gets people to really feel it because otherwise it's just words, you know, it doesn't seem real. So I wrote a song, and uh, for the last two or three years I've been performing this song. But before I play the song, I tell the story of visiting Gore, and I tell the story of what I was feeling. And then we play the song. And I've got a great band, so I mean, they really can project this emotion to the audience. And people tell me that it really affects them, you know, it really makes them uh, want to revisit the story of slavery. Some, of, some people have told me they, they've gone to visit Gore themselves. So, you know, music is a powerful, powerful tool to communicate to people. So that's the way I'm, a, I'm, I'm doing my part. Uh, which activities of the slavery project seem to you to be the most relevant? Uh, the most relevant uh, activity for UNESCO uh, and the Slaveries Project is absolutely education, just making sure people know. You know, um, uh, maybe we can develop uh, the tools for
for education and a curriculum for teaching about slavery. Uh, and we can support all of the UNESCO members. The UNESCO has 195 members, and each one of them needs to have the tools that they need to be able to impart this information, particularly to young people, because uh, with each generation you stand the risk of the story getting more and more foggy and more and more distant. And we don't want that because as soon as people begin to forget something, that's when it starts to happen again. What prospects do you foresee for this project in the coming year, especially in the context of the decade of, uh, for people of African descent? I'm really excited about uh, the future for the Slave Roots Project because everything is starting to point us towards this story. You know, there's been some really amazing movies that have been made recently addressing slavery. Um, there's all sorts of science that is connecting people. Uh, it's connecting uh, people of African descent back to uh, their origins in Africa. You know, you can do DNA tests now as an African American, for example, and they can tell you the area that you are from, you know, based on the results of this test. So the world is getting smaller and people are going to be feeling more and more interconnected. The people in Africa, South America, the Caribbean, you know, Central America and North America, all people of African descent all over the world are going to start to become more and more connected. And I think the Slave Roots Project can really be at the center of that movement.